too, but um, this summer I started July 5th, I think was my first day in the job, um, and I launched right into orientation, and I can say that the ambassadors who worked orientation, um, and specifically in the College of Arts and Letters, were fabulous and really made it successful for our students this year since I was new to the job. So I have a lot of respect for ambassadors and the amount of time you put into learning this job and learning about the colleges. Um, so thank you very much for, for being here. Um, I want to give you a little bit of an overview of the college. I know we don't have a lot of time together. Um, and so I'm, I'm more gonna, we have 31 majors. So I'm going to give you some concepts to help you think about our majors and sort of categorize them in your minds. Um, but first, how many of you are in col uh, majors in the College of Arts and Letters? Okay, it looks like just three. So if you wouldn't mind, what's your major? International Security and Conflict. All right, it's core. Okay. Um, okay. Go ahead. Oh, I'm interdisciplinary studies, so one of them is philosophy. Okay, great. Okay, so yeah, we have a lot of overlap with interdisciplinary studies. Yeah. Uh, what else? I'm political science. Okay. Anybody else? Well, Spanish is one of them. Spanish? Okay, great. Okay, so there you have, there's a sampling of our majors right there, and I'm going to go through some more. Um, when you think about the College of Arts and Letters, um, one of the things to really think about is the concept of the liberal arts, because we provide the majority of the liberal arts education, the liberal arts mission of San Diego State. Um, and so these are some of the concepts that come up often when thinking about our majors and the kinds of things that students are studying in arts and letters. Um, so everything from history to religions and literature, um, really anything that encompasses the dynamics of human experience. So um, issues of class and race, um, uh, economics, um, cultural expressions and practices, identity, <coughs> civic responsibility, ethnicity, languages, philosophy, gender and sexuality. Um, and we're doing all of that from transnational and global perspectives. Um, and so I thought this word cloud was maybe helpful in thinking about the kinds of things that students study in Arts and Letters. Um, I want to share a few highlights, and I think some of them were mentioned in the in the text, uh, the tour script. Um, but um, as the largest college, and also, again, the bearer of this liberal arts mission of SDSU, um, really every undergraduate student will take some number of classes in our college um, as part of their general education requirements. Um, and so we're responsible for 30% of the instruction at SDSU. Um, we provide core liberal arts courses required for the general education portion of our SDSU bachelor's degrees. Um, we have a number of nationally recognized programs in the college, uh, most notably um, international business, which most recently was ranked ninth in the nation and fifth among public universities, so that's something that we're really, really proud of. Um, but we have recent graduates uh, from our May 2016 class in August um, that are going on to the University of Chicago Law School, Harvard, other graduate programs. Um, last year, SDSU had nine Fulbright grant recipients um, that are now doing research or studying all around the world. Some of them are teaching. Seven of those nine came from the College of Arts and Letters. Um, and we even had our first Rhodes Scholar finalist last year, which is the first in the history of SDSU. Um, so, one, uh, I forgot, I have flyers for you. I'm going to just uh, pass these back. Are you on to pass them around? Thank you. I hole punched them for your binders. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize that was such a questions that often comes up when talking about liberal arts majors or majors in the humanities and social sciences is what can you do with a job for a job in one of these fields um, with a, you know, how do you get a job with a major in one of these areas um, and we got that a lot from parents at orientation this summer so you know the, the world of higher education really has become kind of STEM focused, um, science, technology, engineering, and math, and a lot of people think, you know, I need to get a, I need to major in one of the STEM fields in order to be able to get a job after I graduate, um, and that's definitely kind of a trend in higher education in general. Um, but in but the humanities and social sciences, the liberal arts provide training in what we call portable skills, 
Right, so you can get trained for one specific job outside of college, something in a technical field or scientific field, but research shows that most students now, once they graduate, don't stay in one career field. They have four to seven careers over the course of their lifetime. And so those portable skills that we provide training in is preparing you not just for your first job out of college, but for your sixth or your seventh career. Uh, down the road. And those are things like critical thinking skills, the ability to be persuasive in writing and orally, um, to be able to see things from multiple perspectives and we'll tr uh, bring in multiple uh, cultural viewpoints, um, languages, being able to communicate across cultures. And those things are really essential for accomplishing even the things that many of the STEM fields are trying to accomplish, right? So if you have um, something like a global health solution that you're wanting to implement. You can have the technology piece of it, which is really important. But unless you understand the social, economic, uh, cultural context in which you're bringing that solution, it's probably not going to be effective. So we really see the liberal arts as being an important partner for a lot of these uh, global solutions. Um, so the handout I gave you has two sides. The, uh, one side just sort of gives you some more bullet points and highlights about the college. The other side uh, gives you our what we like to refer to as our taxonomy of majors. Um, and you'll see on that there is um, an image that has uh, really a spectrum of, on the one hand, the humanities, or what we like to refer to as what we as humans create. And on the other end are the social sciences, or how we live in community with one another. And all of the majors in the College of Arts and Letters fall somewhere along that spectrum. Uh, it, I think it actually needs to be updated to add a few of our newest majors, but you can get an idea of where our majors fall and how they relate to each other. I think it's helpful to look at a couple of main categories um, of majors. So as I mentioned, 31 majors. It's impossible to remember all of them at any given moment. Um, but so if you look at these as categories, it might help. Um, so we have the humanities. Um, again, we like to refer to this as how we as humans create. So these are some of the products of culture. Things like uh, literature, languages, uh, philosophies, religious texts and doctrines, um, and studying sort of the byproducts of culture, what we as humans create. Um, and so you'll see many of those there. I'm not going to go through all of the majors. Um, a second main category. Uh -oh. There we go. Second main category um, is social science. And um, social sciences and are on the other end of the spectrum. Again, we like to refer to this as how we live in society with each other. Um, and those can be things like um, the placement and migration of peoples. Uh, through geography, how we organize politics, um, how we live in society with each other, and what issues come up when we live in society, um, economics, looking at the monetary systems and how that impacts the way that people live. Um, and then we have ethnic and gender studies, um, something that our uh, college has been really known for over the years, and in fact, we were the first um, <coughs> university in the country, I believe, to offer an LGBT studies major. Um, and so that's something that we're really proud of. But we have um, Africana studies, American Indian studies, Chicano and Chicano studies, and women's studies as well. And then languages and cultures. <coughs> yeah, you know, there's a lot of overlap between these areas, but sometimes it helps to think about them separately. We have a number of languages taught in the college. These are all majors. We actually teach a number of other lang uh, languages that aren't majors, that are smaller programs, um, including um, some uh, native languages like uh, Mishtek and Zapotec um, and a number of others. Uh, but these ones are all fields that you can get a major in. Um, and then there's a few that don't really fall neatly into one of those other categories, and these are our truly interdisciplinary majors. Um, so I'll, I'll talk about a couple of those. I know um, uh, you mentioned that you're at International Security and Conflict Resolution. Um, you know, I think that is a good example, and with all of these majors, you have the chance to really customize what you study, because you get to choose uh, from different thematic areas and put those together. 
Um, comparative international studies is another like that where you can uh, choose two different uh, cultures or regions of the world that you want to study and you take a number of classes from across the university that deal with those regions. Um, sustainability is one that has been wildly popular. It, um, it's a brand, or a rather new major, I think it was about four years old. And when we started it, they were expecting that we would have about 50 students, and within a couple of years, it grew to 250. So it um, really has been even more popular than we expected. Urban studies, international business uh, fall under this as well. Um, all of our majors are pretty interdisciplinary in that students will be taking classes outside of a single major department and sort of reaching around to other areas of the university, but these ones are really interdisciplinary by nature. So that's sort of an overview of our majors. Um, I want to just highlight a few other things before I'm moving on. Um, so this is just silly, but um, <laughs> if you don't know uh, HIP, this, this concept, um, it stands for High Impact Practices. Um, and these are the kinds of things like study abroad, undergraduate research, internship opportunities, things outside of the classrooms that allow students to really engage with the university, engage with their faculty, um, but that are not necessarily in a classroom setting. Um, and so these are practices that we know students are often looking for that really make their college experience richer, make it more of a small university feel. Um, and our majors in arts and letters are designed to allow students these opportunities. Um, I can be difficult for students in some other majors. I know, you know, typically engineering majors, some of the science majors are so tightly structured that it's hard to fit in one of these experiences. Um, we purposely designed our majors so that students can take advantage of high impact practices. So one example of that is study abroad. Um, we now have 13 majors in the college that require a study abroad experience, but really all of our majors encourage it and provide opportunities for students to go abroad. Um, we have a number of faculty in the College of Arts and Letters that lead students abroad on short-term programs um, <coughs> to countries all over the world. And so this is something that our dean feels very strongly about. She wants uh, every student in the College of Arts and Letters to have the opportunity to study abroad. And we're creating new scholarships all the time to try to make that possible. Um, other engagement opportunities available to Arts and Letters students are internships. Again, we have a, a number of majors that either require this or strongly encourage it and have someone to help facilitate that. Um, community-based learning opportunities, and undergraduate research. And in fact, I brought something that we're really proud of. Um, students in the College of Arts and Letters uh, started an undergraduate research journal. Um, this was the second printing. They're working on our third edition right now. Um, and it's a really great opportunity for students, undergraduate students in Arts and Letters, to showcase their writing and research skills. Um, the editors are all students. They, they do bring in some faculty guest editors as well, but it's really a student-led project, and all of the work in it is undergraduate students. Most, under, uh, most students don't have the opportunity to publish their work until they're at the graduate level, master's or doctoral students. Um, so this is a really cool opportunity for our students. Um, we really encourage it. So research is not just for sciences. It's um, definitely something that students do all across campus. Um, and we have uh, opportunities, lots of leadership opportunities in the college, lots of student organizations that are related to our majors, and scholarships. Well, I don't want to elaborate on all of this now. Um, what I'd rather do is open it up for questions that you have. Yeah, what was the name of the journal? Thank you. Yeah, Cal Urge. I didn't tell you. Um, it's Cal Urge. It's just Cal Undergraduate or Urge Cal. Sorry, Urge Cal Undergraduate Research Journal for College of Arts and Letters. We refer to the college as Cal. So it's, yeah, uh, I don't think we've already explained this, but why is it? 